Me, Mark. We had to find a place that took care of our European aspect of the film. I remember Betty calling and saying, well, which one do you think is going to work out? And I said, you know, I think you're going to choose Prague. A lot of people shoot in Prague, but my heart belongs in Budapest. Guys, I speak Hungarian. Need some help? The studio always wants you to find the cheap place to shoot, which has become this place called Prague. Speak better, yeah. Barack Ultra. Oh, this. Barack. It's all taken care of. I didn't like Prague. It looked like a little city. They gave me a list of places that they thought they could afford to shoot, of which Budapest was not on that list. And Ivanya happens to live in Budapest, and I call Andy and I said, Andy, I'm going to come to Budapest and look, could, is there a crew base there that I could work from? And he said, yes, I can put one together, I could do it. Budapest has never really been filmed as Budapest. It's always been a substitution for Paris or for some other part of the world. She got to Budapest and it was just hands down, it was going to be in Budapest. Your mission is to get in the Gunders Palace, find out where the plane is, and stop them from selling it. What I wanted was an urban castle or palace that this guy Gunders, who's the arms dealer, could live in. Of course, she chose the most difficult castle of all, the one right in the middle of town. The interesting thing about the palace and the interesting thing about Budapest is during the war, it was completely bombed. And then the communists came in and redesigned the castle. Now, needless to say, communists don't make the best interior and exterior decorators. <laughs> they refurb it with flat plaster and cinder block. You know, it's real utilitarian. So just about everything you saw that was decorative in and around those boxing matches and that party, we brought in. The cupola, which is Gunder's study, all of the windows, basically the entire cupola is covered again with ornamentation that we had to add to it. We had a lot of sculpting done there and each artist was found for their skill and we would visit, we'd have to visit six, eight, ten artists a day because each one was assigned a different statue or whatever and they worked in their garage. And they rigged two big boxing rings in the middle of the party and then we rigged up a bunch of girls in bikinis serving champagne out of a fountain which was full of champagne. Y'all ready for the slot fest in Budapest, huh? Because we did all this filigree and we put all the decorative or ornamentation back on it, a lot of the people who were around during the war would come by just to look and remember how the castle was. You're working with a civilian to secure entry. What was civilian? Kelly Robinson. It's all about Kelly Robinson. That's right, take my picture. Cheese. Cheese. You just didn't go anywhere without seeing an, an image of Kelly Robinson from passing through the plexiglass doors in his private jet that have etchings of him, to the whole plane covered with his name, to every fight, larger than life posters. The boxing arenas, both Las Vegas and Budapest, were essentially just blank, open arenas. Betty and the production designer went to Vegas, got a lot of research, and we duplicated it. Caesar's Palace did a promotion with us, so our mats, our signage, and they provide a lot of research for us. We were able to duplicate so much that even one of the people from Vegas, one of the real referees, came there and he looked around and he said, you've done it. I have to say that fight looks hot. Hey, ho, 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 come on, get these shots, let's go to the street. Switchblade is the next generation of stealth technology, undetectable to radar, infrared, even the human eye. The design of the Switchblade is interesting. Richard Graves is our first AD. Richard designed the switchblade. I, I didn't design it alone. That's, that's... We weren't sure how it should look. And so my first AD took uh, his child's model kit and uh, carved it up a little and brought it back in the morning based on what we had said in our big meeting and showed it to Marsha and myself and said, is it something like this? And he had fixed the wings so they'd go out and come in. And we said, yeah, it should be something like that. It's a bit primitive, isn't it? Unfortunately, the original working models have all been lost or destroyed because too many people enjoyed playing with them. Why can't you play with the thing, man? You broke it. Basically, that's how we, how we created this airplane. We're heroes that's again, right. even without the plane. I think I'm just the happiest and, and the most pleased with the situation when my director is happy and the actors are moving freely through their environment and they are being who their characters are.